been discussing urban land use models such as the Burgess Concentric Zone Model and the Hoyt Sector Model. In this video, we're going to continue this discussion by taking a look at the multiple nuclei model. One of the major limitations of the Burgess and Hoyt models was that they didn't account for automobiles and therefore couldn't adequately provide a decent summary of why and how people organize themselves within a city. Harris Nolman attempted to develop a more complex model in which to demonstrate the impact of cheap, accessible automobile transportation on urban development. Because of increased transportation, the CBD was no longer the one-stop shop for the large city. Rather, influential economically independent nodes began to emerge along the periphery of the CBD. In the Galactic City model, which is an adaptation of the multiple nuclei model, some of these no regions began to have all the characteristics of the CBD, including office space and business services. And these urban areas were distributed on the outskirts of a city along the city beltway and were called edge cities. So rather than assuming that the CBD is a single heart of a city, the multiple nuclei model suggests that there may be other hearts, albeit smaller ones. This means that the city growth wasn't centered on the CBD alone, and the city grows from these specialized centers meshing together as one large general urban area. Also important to note is that the nodes around which urbanization occurs has a great impact on what else or who else will be there. What I mean is that malls attract rich people or young singles or couples, and universities will attract smart people, coffee shops and burrito bars, and airports will attract hotel convention centers and limo services to mention a few. And now that we have some background, let's break this bad boy down. The CBD is essentially what it is in the other two models we discussed earlier, the concentric zone and the sector model. It is the largest service center in the city and will have the tallest buildings like you would see in any other city. However, there's no picture perfect little circles around it and no wedges leading to the outskirts of the city. Rather, there are specialized nodes throughout the city. Specialization was made possible because of cars. Our number two node is positioned just outside of the CBD and refers to wholesale and light manufacturing. In other words, industries that don't really require a huge amount of land and transportation effort. You might see clothing wholesale companies, soda bottling plants, and other things like that. You won't see steel manufacturing. Next is the low class housing. Just like with the other urban models, these tend to locate near industrial jobs. Many of them are probably going to work. Also, according to the model, things locate near certain nodes that attract them, as we already mentioned. Well, you're usually not going to see rich people clustering in areas where there are going to be factories, noise, and pollution. This land is more affordable, however, and thus attracts lower class residents. Middle class residents will live in a more spread out suburb than the other model suggests because of cars. This area may be situated near one of those outer business districts we mentioned earlier in this video and may even exist because of them in some cases. Many of these residents will seek services from these outlying areas rather than in the CBD. High class residential resembles both the concentric zone and the sector model, except this area doesn't necessarily extend all the way to the CBD, nor does it circle the entire city. Like with any group, rich people usually cluster together, and such is the case in this model. The highest income residents will live far enough away from the city center that they can escape the noise and pollution, but not so far as to be isolated from one of these outer business districts. Next, we have heavy manufacturing. In this region, you see more heavy industries like steel manufacturing, oil refineries, creation of chemicals, etc. This is different from the light manufacturing we discussed earlier. These industries would require more land and transportation effort. Therefore, they are located on the outside of the model, but near the low-class residents are going to be working there. Which brings me to the outer business districts. These regions of the city are centered on nodes mentioned earlier and usually attract residents from the richer middle class and high class areas. They offer a range of services and can be centered on things like airports, colleges and universities or shopping malls. Lastly, the residential suburb area is just like what it sounds. The biggest difference between this and say the middle class region is that these houses aren't perhaps as clustered as in neighborhoods like traditional middle class urban sprawl but these are more like small streets that are slightly more isolated. 
the industrial suburbs would be small-scale industries that are clustered together and accessible because of trucks, making it possible for these to locate free of the traditional city-centered industrial regions. Criticisms of this model include that it still doesn't account for too much variation. Look at this another way, it's sometimes difficult to determine which areas are which. Where does middle class become high class? There could be a lot of overlap. Hope you enjoyed the third of my videos on urban models. More importantly, I hope you learned a lot. Look out for my next video and thank you for watching Professor Dustin. Peace out students.